right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It's just, I'm so excited to uh, have you all here today, and we're so honored, Norm. I'm sitting here with two of my former bosses, uh, Slate Horton and Norm Dix, and Norm, we're just so honored to have you join us here for our speaker series event today. Um, you have two handouts in front of you. One is Norm's uh, bio, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. You've got it right in front of you. And also just a one-pager about the Slate Horton uh, International Policy Center. I thought you might be uh, interested in looking at that. Uh, just briefly, I know that Norm does not need any kind of an introduction uh, for this group, but as you all know, he represented the 6th Congressional District for 37 years, retiring at the end of last year, but of course he didn't really retire. Um, he's also joined with the Van S. Feldman Law Firm and is on a lot of boards, and he's probably busier now than he was uh, when he was at the, in the House. Uh, but he retired at the end of uh, last year as a ranking member of the House Appropriations Committee, very prestigious uh, position. And Norm not only served his district well, but he served the entire state of Washington. And many times, as you've all seen in the press, Norm was described as the third senator from, uh, from Washington state. So, Norm, before we start, we have some special guests that I'd like to introduce yes, uh, today, if uh, that's okay. Susie Dix has joined us. Susie, we're really pleased to have you here. And Susie has a guest, Dorothy Stimson, the wife of former Ambassador Edward Stimson. We're very honored to have you with us today. And uh, Governor John Spellman, thank you for being here today. Pleased to have you here. And Don Lucian was Norm's district director for many, many, many years. So, uh, Don, we're really, really pleased to, to have you with us here today. And last but not least, where's Mr. Hughes? John Hughes, our Washington State oral historian out of our Secretary of State's office. And John is an author. He's the author of Slade's biography here. He also wrote Booth Gardner's biography and just finished Governor Spellman's biography. So, Norm, you are probably next. But John <laughs> Slate signed a copy for you. So that's a copy for you, uh, for you to take. So, uh, um, it's a good book, my you, wife. Yes. A real good book. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. It is a very, very good book. So, so briefly, uh, Rich, I'm going to turn over to you just for a minute, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the format. So I'd like to introduce Rich Ellings, the president of the National Bureau of Asian Research. Well, Norm and Slade served as our guiding, founding um, wise guys uh, back uh, 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago. Uh, and actually before that, before we got NBR off the ground, um, Norm and Slade were critical in an appropriation to the Jackson Foundation, which earnings from which uh, founded NBR. And so, in fact, I have to tell you, Slade, I was lured away from your staff in, uh, I guess, effective December 31, 85, on the promise that we might be able to establish this Ken Pyle, saying, I think we have a good chance of establishing this new institution. He was talking it up. He at that time thought it would be on campus, not off campus. And uh, But anyway, that's how far back this idea went. And from the get-go, you guys agreed when it was legal for sitting members of Congress to serve as advisors to an institution. Just in the last few years, you know, you can't even be a, 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 an honorary anything, even on the Red Cross. That's illegal now. But really? It is. <laughs> it is. Oh, sorry. I thought we couldn't. I thought we couldn't make calls to raise money. No, it's so bad that you can't yeah. even be uh, listed as a uh -huh. human being associated with a nonprofit. <laughs> if you can believe it. It's bad. Yeah, it is ridiculous. But anyway, that's how far we've gone. And uh, but in those days, no problem. We held meetings, and so we just organized the meetings to found NBR around your two schedules. That was about two days a year. <laughs> so we had narrow windows and we got gotcha. you. So in any, over the years, uh, both of you did so many, many wonderful things, but I thought I'd bring a couple of pictures for you. This isn't for too long ago, but this is when we established the Sholly Chair. Oh, yeah. John Sholly Kashfield. Steve, Steve Hadley at the time was yeah. our security advisor. You got Danny. Yeah, of course, Bridget was still around with us. And then this, Norm did something he had never done before uh, one time for us. And that is swear uh, a human being into U.S. citizenship. And oh, so right. that is that. So there's Sholly and George Russell, yeah. all these people. There you are. 
Uh, not a single gray hair in your head. <laughs> um, and Bridget up front, maybe a couple gray hairs. But. What year was that? Uh, it was about eight, nine years ago, eight, ten nine years, years ago, ago, maybe. Eight, eight, yeah, we'll pass, we'll, pass we'll pass them around. around. So, yeah. Pass them around. Maybe ten Thanks, years Rich. ago. And uh, so anyway, then we've got a little bit of this history written up from the past and other stuff, and there you go. So, then, Norm, we are gonna, very informal. Um, of course, we designated this as a conversation with Norm Dix, talking about the challenging issues of the day. But you can talk to us about anything you'd like to. We'll let you talk for a little bit. Slate will ask a few questions. Sure. We'll open it up to the audience for a few questions. And I'll turn it to Slate to welcome you too. I can basically say just one thing about Norm. During the entire time when I was in the Senate, when we had a problem or a project in the House, it was Norm Dix we called yeah. from the state of Washington. It was just as simple as that. He was the one who was going to get it done, and he was the one who did get it done. And they're just there just couldn't be any better representation than he provided for his for, for, for his constituents and for his state. He did not end his concern uh, at the boundaries of the 6th Congressional District. But I am going to start this out with one question. In looking for you to invite you here, I discovered that your email address was Huskies. <laughs> Tell us about that beginning. <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't have a Gmail until I lost my 45 member staff uh, <laughs> between the Appropriations Committee and the um, and the uh, my personal staff. But 63 was my number as a Husky. So I did 60. I didn't graduate. The 62 season was my last season at Washington, mm -hmm. which I ended by intercepting a pass against Washington State to win the first <laughs> Apple Cup. How's that? Good call. Good call. I, I knew I started this right. <laughs> well, that's where it came from. Well, first of all, uh, Slate, it's great to be here with you. And, and uh, Cree, of course, was on my staff and uh, did uh, the work on interior appropriations and this was 7980 uh, right in the middle of uh, the um, Mount St. Helens eruption and and uh, and so there was just an incredible amount of work that had to be done and and uh, Cree did a fantastic job and I'm so glad that, that she went on to, you, to your staff I and stole, her from you. stole her from me well, you, know, you, you picked a good one and um, and now her husband is my boss at Dan S. Feldman so uh, uh, Rick and uh, Bruce is here, his brother, and there's so many old friends here. That it's it's great. To, and Susie, of course, and Dorothy Stimson. Dorothy uh, was married to Ed Stimson, and uh, who unfortunately died a couple years ago. Uh, it was our ambassador to ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization in Montreal. And uh, Ed was just one of those great people. And he was one of the few ambassadors that was appointed by Bill Clinton that uh, George Bush kept on because he was so popular mm -hmm. on both sides of the aisle. And, of course, Don Lucian. Uh, Don was my first office manager and uh, ran my was one of the leaders of my campaign effort, my first campaign in 1976. And, what, and uh, she's been tremendous down in Tacoma, has been an invaluable advisor and, and a great friend. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about, you know, what I could say today. And um, when I was, I guess, you know, I had uh, eight years of work on uh, Senator Magnuson's staff, and I learned a lot. And one thing I learned from both Magnuson Jackson and you, Slade, was, it, you know, you just don't go back there to vote. You've got to go back there and get something done. And, uh, and so I always felt that... Uh, my job was to try to be a, a, a strong representative for Washington State. And, of course, one of the things that made that possible was the fact that I was uh, elected to the Appropriations Committee as a freshman in 1976. In fact, uh, uh, Lindy Boggs, who just passed a few days ago, uh, Lindy uh, was, was on, came on the Appropriations Committee at the same time that I did, and uh, Adam Benjamin. 
And uh, so that being on the Appropriations Committee put me in a position where I could do some things. As you know, Slade, you were on the Senate Appropriations Committee. You know, and, and we still had earmarks, and you could still do something for your district, which is one of the things that I deeply regret that Congress has changed. Uh, you can't even now, you can't even have an authorization. If, it, if the authorization is an earmark, they won't let you do that. So uh, that's one of the reasons I decided it might be time to do something else was because the tools that we had used so effectively for 44 years, well, my time with Maggie and uh, and uh, 36 years in the House, we, all those things have been kind of taken away. And, uh, you know, one of, I can always remember when, when uh, you were first elected, uh, we, we, you and I were at a meeting in uh, Tacoma that George Weyerhaeuser, who was a pretty prominent person, especially in Pierce County and CEO of, of Weyerhaeuser, uh, called about community redevelopment. And... Um, and, and uh, with your help, uh, I put this. I brought this picture today. I hope you all take a, a good look at it. Slade and I are there uh, with President Bush signing the Puyallup Indian Land Claim Settlement. Uh, that's, this is about must be about 68. It was, and it happened to be right at the same time that Tom Foley became Speaker. And I was reminding Slade of this story. The, it was the, actually the first day that Foley had been elected uh, by the House as Speaker, uh, he was going down to have lunch with Bush, George Bush. And, um, and I said, Tom, you've got to ask him to sign the Puyallup Indian Land Claim Settlement. <laughs> and he said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. So a, a few hours later, he comes back on the floor and he waves me over. He says, uh, Bush says he'll sign it. He can't pronounce it, but he can sign it. <laughs> and uh, I think with a little magic from Slade, all of a sudden, uh, Bush decides he's going to have a bill signing ceremony. And so all of us went down. And, and Danny Inouye is there, who was chairman of the, uh, chairman of the uh, Indian Affairs Committee in the Senate. And in a way, came out. He says twelve, I think nine, but nine separate times to Tacoma to sit down with the tribe to keep them at the table. Now, how many senators from another state would ever do that? I mean, he was, and it was out of loyalty to, uh, you know, our delegation, which had always been strong supporter of statehood for Hawaii, and also in a way was was on commerce and in, on appropriations. So these were the key committees, and and we. It all worked together. But uh, the Puyallup Indian Land Claim Settlement took about uh, four or five years to, to negotiate. We brought Jim Waldo in. I asked Waldo to come in and represent the Port of Tacoma. Then I told the Port that he was going to be their guy, and they, they were willing to do that. And, um, and, um, and so we, we worked, and we had meeting after meeting after meeting with the tribe. And there was, you know, there was the, the question of parts of Tacoma, parts of the Port, Fife, Puyallup. The, that the, the tribe claimed were theirs. And so we had to get this thing resolved. And after all these years of negotiation, we reached an agreement. And, and Waldo came back and uh, he said to me, uh, Norm, I'm going to, you know, we have the agreement, the courts approved it. I'm going to now go to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post. I said, No, you're not, Jim. I said, uh, We're not doing. Anything. Our our motto is run silent, run deep, and uh, we're going to just kind of see if we can slide this through. And with within four months, we had it authorized, and the entire hundred and eight million dollar appropriation funded by Sid Yates from and uh, and Slate uh, and uh, you know and the Senate. And, 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 of course, Yates was a very strong supporter of the tribes, and, 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 and I was on the subcommittee, so he, he was going to do it. But you could not do that now under any circumstance. And one, one, one story, uh, we were on the floor of the House, and, and uh, I had called 325 members of the House and told them this was the most important thing in my career, and I needed their vote and support on this, on this bill, this authorization bill. 
and uh, and everything's going smoothly. Uh, uh, Rod Chandler's up speaking, uh, Morrison, everybody, and it's just going along great. And then all of a sudden, out on the floor comes Bill Frenzel, a, a crusty old uh, curmudgeon from Minnesota, <laughs> and Frenzel. Uh, Frenzel says, uh, gets up and he says, I hate to be the skunk at the garden park. I can remember these lines pretty well. And, uh, but the, you know, the, the American taxpayers are going to have to pay the bill for this wonderful authorization. And uh, I just have real problems with this. And, um, you know, I'm, and so he, he sits down. So I'm, I'm trying to get all the Republicans in the delegation to go over and talk to him. And, um, so finally, he comes down in the well and waves me. I was kind of the floor manager on our side. Waves me over and he says, Norm, um, Franny and Susie are in the same international club. And I would hate to do anything that would hurt our friendship. So I am not going to ask for a record vote. And this was one of those slate where this was a two-thirds vote. Yep. You, you know, it was a, we did it on suspension, so you had to get two thirds of the house to vote for this thing, and so we didn't want. We had Foley in the chair, and we voice voted it, and Frenzel didn't ask for a record. So, and I went home. I went home that night. I said, Susie, you saved the through all of it. <laughs> But you know, we we did we did you know I always emphasize that on any of these projects, you can't do these things by yourself. I remember working with John Stellman when he was governor and, and uh, when he was county exec when Boeing laid off 65,000 people. I mean, we had, we came everybody had to get together and work to to, to save the community. And, uh, you know, so I, I emphasize that. The delegation uh, at that time could, could work together and get things done. It was very bipartisan, which is the way it ought to be. And unfortunately, the, our delegation is still, I think, very bipartisan. But, but uh, um, you know, it, it, it isn't, you know, these things just don't happen. It takes cooperation from the state, from the governor's office, from the congressional delegation, from the mayors, the county execs, especially here in King County, where, you know, and, and uh, to great, Senator Magnuson's great credit, he was able to get three emergency extensions of unemployment enacted. Uh, one story on that one. One, so we're, we're, we're about on the third one of these emergency extensions. It didn't hurt that we had Russell Long on the Commerce Committee as the Merchant Marine Chairman of the Subcommittee, and Russell Long was also Chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. So we had that, that one pretty well taken care of. But the Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, uh, we felt we had to make a call to him, and so Magnuson gets on the, we get him on the phone, and, and the Chairman picks up and Maggie says, Orville, Orville, I really need your help on this emergency extension of unemployment comp. And, uh, you know, it, the state of Washington is in turmoil. We've we got to have help these people. And Orville, I know you're going to help me. He hangs up. And he said, how did I do? I said, you did great, but you had the wrong right, brother. It was, it was Wilbur Mills. <laughs> Okay, so for years the staff giggled behind Magnuson's back about about his faux pas, his greatest of all faux pas. He had some beauties. Uh, uh, so so eighty six. This is after Fanny Fox, after all this. Oh, after Fanny. After Fanny Fox. Yeah. And then he's out of the house, but he's up there lobbying. He's lobbying. And he's in the in the in the House Democratic cloakroom in the in the in the restaurant having lunch with a member, and a vote starts, and the other member gets up and leaves quickly. So I went over and I said, "Mr. Chairman, I've got to ask you." I was Senator Magnuson's assistant. I said, uh, "How did how did you react when he called you uh, Orville?" And he said, "Well, you obviously don't know the story." He said, one night when Magnuson and I were in the house together, we were out uh, drinking. I could believe that. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, they were not in the fountain. Uh, and, and I asked him, did he mind being called Maggie? And he said, well, my friends call me Warren. And, uh, and he said, what about your name? He said, well, my father wanted to name me Orville hyphen Wilbur Mills, but my mother wouldn't agree to it. 
So Maggie said, which would you have rather been, Orville or Wilbur? And Mills said, I would have rather been Orville. So Magnuson said, well, between you and me, it'll always be Orville. And Magnuson didn't tell us this, you know. And, uh, so instead of, instead of making this incredible faux pas, he, he, he was, in, it was words of endearment to, to the chairman. And the chairman passed the bill by four votes in, 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 the, in the Senate. And this was for states, this was only with states that had uh, extraordinarily high rates of unemployment. They didn't have enough money in the fund to fund all. It just was certain states uh, got the same. Ribikoff was also very helpful on that. But those, we were able to do these things. You know, I, as I look back uh, from my time there, 68 to 76, um, Bipartisanship. Of course, when you have 67 Democratic senators, mm -hmm. it's easier to get cooperation. Don't you agree, Slade? I mean, or if you had 67 Republican senators, I think it would be more cooperation. But there was there was cooperation. Every bill had a Democratic sponsor, a Republican sponsor, and it was a different era. And we passed so much significant legislation. People forget that we in that era we passed the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the National Environmental Policy. Act, which was Scoop's bill. We created the Environmental Protection Agency, which Bill Ruckelshaus was the first administrator of. And every one of those bills was passed by an overwhelmingly Democratic Congress, and Richard Nixon signed them into law. And uh, Nixon, except for a little, one little mistake, uh, and, with his, and, and to think about Asia and, and opening up uh, uh, our, our trade and our relationship with the People's Republic of China. I mean, that was a, it was a better time, and, and, and there was cooperation. And, um, you know, when I think about Tacoma and all the things we were able to do, Don was very instrumental in a lot of these things. Uh, we were able to get the uh, Pantages Theater in that, uh, funded through an EDA grant. And uh, we, were, we were able to do uh, the Tacoma Spur. And the University of Washington said they never would have put the branch campus in downtown Tacoma had it not been for the link off the interstate. And uh, Union Station. This is one of those great stories. Um, Union Station creating, uh, transitioning it into a federal courthouse. Um, you know, we got a le uh, there was a letter to the editor by a guy named Seymour Johnson. And Seymour Johnson says, I understand the federal courts need more space in Tacoma. Uh, why don't why doesn't Norm Dix get busy back there and see if Union Station could be utilized as a federal courthouse? Uh, Seymour Johnson. And so I always say because Tim Thompson hates to hear me say this, uh, Don uh, was I think I think Don was had retired by this point. Uh, but nobody sees this letter in the editor the, in the in the paper. I get a letter from Albert Baker. Albert Baker was the publisher of the News Tribune, and he owned the newspaper. This is before McClatchy. And he was, as far as I was concerned, he was the most important person I had to make happy in the 6th Congressional District, okay? And says, Norm, what about this? Albert. And that was it. And it was very terse. And he has a copy of the, of the letter to the editor. So we took a look at this, and it became a possibility, and we put and we put language in an appropriation bill that said you shall shall a very important word during the during the Reagan administration uh, build no, uh, yeah it was Reagan uh, you shall build a federal courthouse at Union Station in Tacoma Washington and uh, and you, and uh, you must have gotten it through the Senate. And because uh, uh, you're on the Appropriations Committee and we're working on this. But this became one of the great restorations in the history of the country and, uh, and, and really helped that part of town. And then the, the State Museum of History. And then in honor of our great, the, the, the hall here, George Russell, who was one of the most important men in, in Tacoma, Pierce County, uh, the, the Russell Museum of Glass, and then the Tacoma Art Museum, and, and now we have an automo automobile museum, which is one of the greatest collections of, of, of cars I've ever seen. And Tacoma has really turned the corner, and the Port of Tacoma is doing very well. 
part, and when we did the Tacoma Spur, which was a, a link off the interstate, we kept the option to build a road around the back of the port and to take out the bridge on Blair Waterway, which is now the waterway they're using for these 10,000 10, 10, container uh, uh, ships that are coming in. So, you know, to me, Tacoma, Tacoma had been in... Uh, had been uh, almost in a place of ridicule, the Roma of Tacoma. And Simpson stepped up and did a great job of, of, of fixing up that mill. But that, that, to me, Slade, one of the great things about being in the Congress was being able to do these kind of projects. Uh, my tunnel over in Bremerton, which was much maligned until they, the first cars went through, and they said, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. It's like the Narrows Bridge. You know, you know they, they hated the Narrows Bridge until it was built. Now the, the people can't think how they'd ever live without it. But uh, being able to work on these things, and you know, and I just wanted to mention a couple of things on national security, and then we'll open it up for whatever questions. You know, two of the things that I enjoyed working on the most. One was the three. One was the um, the the B-2 bomber. I was the lead in the House of Representatives on the B-2, and one of the things that I was convinced of was that if we could get off this nuclear weapon thing and use the B-2 with smart conventional weapons where you could go in on one sortie and take out 16 separate targets, that this would have a revolutionary effect on, uh, on war fighting and uh, would give us, it would give us an incredible capability. And we were able to do that. And, uh, and uh, the B-2 was utilized and, and Clinton took... Uh, Ike Skelton and myself with him out to, to greet the pilots when they came back. And these pilots came up to me and said, Now, Dix, remember, if you hadn't put uh, GPS-aided targeting and GPS-aided munitions on this plane one year early, we would not have been ready to, to be utilized. And I'd kind of forgotten that. But... Uh, the, that that conversion of the B-2 from a nuclear bomb dropper to a conventional weapon, and because you can use these kind of weapons when you if you have to, and let's hope we don't have to use them. And the other one was the Trident submarine base. That was the, one of the most enormous projects in my district in Tacoma, uh, and, and up in Kitsap County, obviously. Uh, and we're now working. And it's amazing how things go by. Uh, we're now working on the, uh, the Ohio Replacement Program, mm -hmm. uh, which the House strongly endorsed the other day on a vote on the appropriations bill. But those two programs, and then the one that was the most difficult was the tanker. And uh, the, the first year, we, we, uh, during the Bush administration, we were able, on the last day of Pete Aldridge's tenure as the acquisition guy, he says we want the Boeing 767, and we're not even interested in the Airbus planes because none of them are the right size, and they're, they're, they burn too much fuel, and we're going to go with Boeing. Well, that was a great decision until there was a little scandal, and uh, and then and then uh, uh, the, the decision was overturned. Then and then we then the second go around we lost to Northrop Grumman and uh, Eads. And uh, but there was eight major violations of procurement law, and the GAO overturned the decision. And then they had to do it again. And then finally, I, I, I'll tell you where I was. I was sitting in Florida, fishing, uh, with Kurt Smith. You know Kurt, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, who else was there? Tony Floor. And we're out there fishing, and I get a call from the governor. She wants to know if I've heard anything. And I said, and I'm, and I'm, just as she calls, I said, uh, Governor, I, I, I'm going to turn this over to Kurt. I just got a bite, <laughs> a little yellow tail. And, um, but I go in at 5 o'clock that afternoon, okay? Three minutes to 5, I get a call from Bill Lynn, Deputy Secretary of Defense. Norm, and when he says this, I can't even believe it. I was convinced we were going to lose. He says, Boeing has won and won decisively. 
And, uh, and so I got on the phone and called all the radio stations, which I was very good at, um, <laughs> in Seattle. And we're on the we're on the we're on the air in Seattle before the secretary who's they're reading the statement live from the secretary of Donnelly, Michael Donnelly, uh, and and uh, the secretary is still going on and on and on and hasn't announced who won. And of course, the, all the media guys are saying, "Norm, do you know what you're talking about?" <laughs> but we but we did win it, and uh, that'll be one of the most important things. <clears throat> To keep uh, you know Boeing up with the seven six seven, I am, and I do worry. I, you know, I work as a, a consultant to Boeing, but I just do worry uh, that uh, you know that there's been such tension here, uh, you know, uh, sometimes between the, the the unions and Boeing. I, I just hope we can, you know, I've tried with do you everything. Worry I that can. there's no longer a single local director. On, uh, well, uh, I wish there were. I wish and. and uh, and there have been in the past, but you know, um, I wish I wish I, I wish our state was represented on the board. Yes, I do, and I do, and I am concerned about that. Um, but but McNerney, I, I I always had good dealings with him. He was always straightforward, and uh, you know, sometimes when you know when they moved the headquarters to Chicago, that uh, you know, that to a lot of people was bad. And, but they only could get 300 people to go. It was supposed to be 500, only 300 would go. And the one thing it did for me on our big 10-year crusade to get the tanker for Boeing, it put Denny Hastert right in my corner. And he, he loved having Boeing in, in Illinois. And he said, Norm. Whatever you just get it out of the Pentagon, I'll take care of the White House. Mm -hmm. So you know he was he was a, a big advocate. Sometimes when you're all you know and spread around and down in South Carolina, as much as that was painful, you get Lindsey Graham, you get some other, as you well know, you get some other people that are, are concerned about your issues. But um, you know I, I just want to say, Slade, that. Uh, um, Scoop always used to say that one thing about Slade Gordon, he can make up his mind, he can make a decision. And I, I want to tell you, I enjoyed the 18 years that we worked together. And when I needed help, I called you. And, uh, and you were always there. And, and you think about the Tri-Cities and, and uh, you know, uh, trying to help on the cleanup of nuclear waste and, 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 and all the issues before the Interior Committee. Uh, which we both chaired. You chaired it first, and then I got to be chair. It only took me 30 years. And uh, I said, I said, the hell with this third senator crap. I just want to be chairman of something. Okay? <laughs> and finally, I got to be chairman of interior and defense. So didn't quite get to the full committee, but I got to be ranking. And I want to say something. Al Rogers from Kentucky and I were just like this last Congress. We we passed six bills on the floor, including the defense bill, and bipartisanship was still alive in the House of Representatives. Unfortunately, the other body, that's how we refer to the sentence, like, uh, the other body didn't pass a single appropriation bill, not one. And so, I mean, you know, when you see two United States senators, two friends of mine, Tom Harkin and Pat Leahy pass up being chairman of the Appropriations Committee. It isn't what it used to be. And uh, Barbara Mikulski, who is fantastic, she is a tough lady. And if anybody can deal with Harry Reid and get some floor time, she should be able to do it. And Richard Shelby, who is also uh, you know, quite an operator. And uh, I know Boeing's big down there in, 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 uh, in uh, Alabama uh, with the space program. They're very, very important, very impressive.